Glory to the Lamb. Jesus the Christ. Today in the midweek teach, we're going to be reading out of Ephesians. Paul writing to the Ephesians. Chapter 4, starting in verse 7. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of the Christ's gift. Therefore he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended. What does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of the Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But, speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head, the Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Quite a mouthful in that paragraph. Primary verse, Ephesians 4, 14. We should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness for which they lay in wait to deceive. Hallelujah. Cunning craftiness of deceit. Plotting. Some versions. So. We've titled our message Religions of Men and Women. Religions of Men and Women. Because I want to touch on a uh, ceremony involving the Trinity Theological College. It's a Uniting Church College, Trinity. Uniting College and the Australian Roman Catholic University who united in, in an official ecumenical ceremony. This is all official. That's going back over, just over a decade. And uh, still relevant in, in, in relation to ecumenicalism, the whole church, um, the children of the mother of the harlot, the Roman Catholic Church. Many people today um, being tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine you can find. Eh? Tricked, deceived. You wouldn't think you'd read about it, would you? In relation to Jesus and his church. <laughs> You wouldn't think it would be there. I thought so different before I came to the Lord. I, I, I 
just wasn't good enough to, to, to darken the doorway of a church. I thought they were just so uh, holy, just so great and so beyond me. I mean, who am I to go in there? So um, I've certainly learnt different after 33 three years of reading the Word and um, meditating upon it, uh, talking with the Lord, walking with the Lord, preaching His Word. I see things way, way, way different. Um, these two... Um, churches, the, the United Church and the Roman Catholic had the ceremony this uh, ecumenical ceremony they were both on the same page regarding the production of chocolate this was like an Easter regarding Easter eggs and all the rest of that fair trade. Uh, they were upset about the production of chocolate under child labour, as were the um, World Vision, who the three of them support a fair trade chocolate egg arrangement. <laughs> Uh, which is good in itself, but I mean, everything I have to ask, what about Jesus, you know? Where does he fit in? With the chocolate or with the eggs? Or, um, where does he fit in? He doesn't fit in, does he, with either? And he doesn't fit in with the whole church, the Roman Catholic Church. And he doesn't fit in with the Uniting Church because she's a um, children of the mother of harlots. But we do see in uh, Ephesians 4.15 that it says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, not the Pope, the head, Christ. He's the head of the church, isn't he? The Lord Jesus. Now, it's one thing to um, help children and help the poor and the needy. Um, but at According to scripture, Jesus should get first priority. He gets the first thought. Even above children, the poor, needy. We see that all through the scriptures. We see that with the um, with the prophets. I'm just going to turn over to um, the likes of Luke. And I'll try and bring that up. Uh, bring it up there and look if I can where uh, as the spirit leads this is all as the spirit leads uh, Luke 4 and the verse is um Luke 4.24 Assuredly I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heavens, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months and there was a great famine throughout all the land. But to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath in the region of Sidon to a woman who was a widow 
So we've got a famine happening and we've got a widow. You know? But the Lord still gets the priority, doesn't he? Hey? But I tell you truly, many widows, many widows, but the Lord didn't go to them all. As I just said, you know, helping children, helping the poor, helping the needy, it's all good. That's all good stuff. But even then, Jesus must get priority. Things to be done are to be done his way. And then it goes on to say, um, in verse 27, Luke 4, and there were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elijah. So you got Elijah and Elijah. In the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them was cleansed except one, except Naaman the Syrian. Hey? And they got all, they got angry and they were filled with wrath when they heard this. <laughs> hey? They were filled with wrath when they heard about this. Because Jesus does things his way. God does things his way. Jesus is the head of the church. Many, many widows, many lepers. Sort of sounds like the world, doesn't it? Why aren't they, why is, if there's a God, why isn't he healing everyone? Why is he ha allowed this? Why is he allowed that? God has a blueprint plan and he don't answer to no man. God has a blueprint plan and he don't answer no man, only war man. And that's the bottom line. We'll be a lot happier when we accept that. Unless you think you're God, I would do this and I'd do that. I wouldn't do that. A bloke said that to me recently. I wouldn't do that, you know. I know God did it, but I wouldn't. It, 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 uh, I mean, as if a human would have more love or be more loving, that would be the better way of putting it. Because God is love. You can't really measure it, can you? God is love. As if a human would, would um, be more loving than God. How stupid is that? That person is deceived. So, I mean, it's one thing to help the children, the poor, the needy, but Jesus has to be first. And associating a, a chocolate eggs or, a, or any other lolly eggs or whatever with Christ and his work and outworking at Calvary, I mean... What true disciple would do that? We don't find any in the scriptures. We don't find any in the scriptures. As if uh, humanity's got to make things easier for humanity to understand God and, and understand Christ and get saved. As if the Lord didn't know what he was doing sort of thing, you know? So we've got to make it easier for people to get saved. There's no easy way of salvation. According to scripture, there is no easy way of salvation. Salvation in the scriptures talks about picking up your cross. Does that sound easy? Just the mention of a cross straight off says crucifixion. Hey? Picking up your cross. This is in association with salvation. It's in Matthew. <coughs> and uh, giving up your life. Does that sound easy? <laughs> giving up your life. What about departing from sin? In 2 Timothy 2.19, everyone that names the name of Christ must depart from sin. Hey? 
Does that sound easy? It's not easy. No one's going to make it easy. I don't care. Look, if any anyone is going to make it easy for you to be saved, they um, they got no fear of the Lord. They don't believe the word of God. They don't believe Jesus. They have no faith. And road they're leading you on is not going to lead to heaven because there's no easy way. You know, that's why we have to be born again. There's no way we can cope otherwise. Absolutely no way. We could cope with the rigours of righteousness. Religion? Ah. Easy. You can do what you like. You, you. Religion is, is like made out of rubber. You can bend it in any direction. You can do anything with it. Eh? You can join and disconnect and like Lego blocks. You can make anything out of it. But Jesus' word is Jesus' word. That's the bottom line. There's so many mixed bags today, so many spiritual stews with no substance. Hey? No substance. In other words, the Christ who is the substance, he is not <coughs> he is not the theme. Jesus has to be the theme. Because he's the head. He's the head of the church, the head of the body. Um, I mean, eggs. Not, not, not if he, this is in relation to Easter and religions of men and women. Um, rabbits laying eggs. It's contrary to the code of nature for starters, or God's creation. Right? Can we say it's just, you know, United Church? Roman Catholic Church, world vision jumping up and down about fair trade. I mean, is that fair? Is that just to do that? To to lower the law down to the level of an uh, uh, of candy eggs, chocolate eggs. No, I think it's a disgrace, really. It's certainly distorted. It's not true. It's not the truth. And it's not pure. It's not going to help anyone. But this narrow road, and it is a narrow road. We should no longer be children tossed to and fro, backwards and forwards, maybe could be, I don't know, carried about with every wind. When it says every wind, it means there's a lot of doctrines out there. Every wind of doctrine. There's a lot of doctrines out there. By the trickery of men, forward slash women, in the cunning craftiness. Right? in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Cunning craftiness by which they lie in wait to deceive. Right? Deceitful plotting. These can't possibly be of the holy remnant, can they? No, they can't. No. No, they can't. Now, let me say that... Uh, who would really bother... Ask yourself this question, with Easter? I mean, once the, the chocolate eggs... These were no longer produced. 
No more chocolate eggs. The business has made no more money. And the children's cravings were denied. And the children just forgot about it. Uh, you know what? I, I reckon we would um, start to experience what the Christ really went through. <laughs> hey? uh, on the lines of crucifixion, I mean. And, let me add, and it give Big Red also. Let's throw in Santa. Give him the sack with the rabbit spirits, and uh, I reckon you're gonna hear people crying out, "Eli, Eli, Lama Sabastani, Lord, Lord, why have you forsaken me?" <laughs> hey, when you get rid of those two, they're big money makers, big money makers for the Judases. Hey. That's all people are interested, all the world is interested. It's all about money. And the church has jumped on the bandwagon too. But at the end of the day, end of the day, Friday is Friday, isn't it? Saturday is Saturday. And St. Paul of Tarsus was disgusted that converted Jews would revert back to Judaism after all he said and take note of certain days, months, years and seasons Why? what's that about? you know where's the relevance? where's the connection? with the Christ Paul actually said their hearts were set. We go to Galatians 4, have a quick look there. Galatians 4. You say, well, it's not the season for Easter. What are you talking about? What are you mentioning this for? The Bible is seasonal every day. I don't care what part of it. It's not as the seasons lead. That's in the natural. We're in the spiritual. It's as the Lord leads. And the scriptures read. Galatians 4, 8. But then... Whoops. Let's get that dog ear off that. But then indeed, when you did not... No, God, you serve those things which by nature are not God. But now, after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn once again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire to be in bondage? You observe days, months, seasons years I'm afraid for you lest I've laboured for you in vain eh? what do you think of that I'm afraid their hearts these people their hearts were set they, they, they didn't want to let go of it did they Paul had Great fears fill these people. He wasn't afraid, but he had fear for them. Verse 8 says, But then, indeed, then, when you did not know God. You know these seasons and months, and you, that's for people who don't know God. That's for people who don't know God. Because there's no seasons, there's no days in the spiritual. But for things under the sun... There is a season, hey? but in the Lord, 
we praise him every day. We 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 re, we rejoice in him every day. We we boast of him every day. He is our life without ceasing as a river runs and doesn't run and stop and then it starts again and there's a gap and then it stops then it starts again now it runs, the river just runs there's a river of life flowing out of me makes the lame to walk and the blind to see opens prison doors sets the captive free Hey. Fair trade. United Church, Roman Catholic Church. World vision. It wasn't long back last year, I think it was. End of last year that World Vision was tickling the till. I wonder where all the money was going. Come on. Religions of men and women, far away from the Lord Jesus' message. What Jesus had, had said. Hey? Ephesians 4 7. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of the Christ's gift. See, the, the Christ gift. It's a gift. Everything we have is gift. There's nothing white-knuckled. There's nothing struggled for. It's all gift. Right? The grace is a gift. The faith is... Faith, the substance, is a gift. The faith is a gift. Jesus is the greatest gift. God, Father, gave his son. His name is Jesus. Ephesians 4, 8. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, led captivity captive, gave gifts to men, cleared the path, and gave the gifts. Now this, he ascended. What does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to the apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and men. He gave some. The key word in, in, there is gave, isn't it? Just as he initiated it with uh, in. 8a and gave gifts to men. Hey? Gave, gave, gave some. He allowed some men to be apostles, prophets, pastors. To, there's no way you can make that happen. <laughs> There's no way I could make that happen. But religions of men say different, don't they? The United Church says different. The Roman Catholic Church agrees. Salvos agree. World Vision agree. They're all ecumenical. They're all jumping in there together, aren't they? In one accord. A bit like Terror Bible, but no relationship with God. There's nothing happening with God. 
it's all just let's keep the business going somehow. You know, all hands on deck. Just keep the business going, keep the money coming in somehow. That's what... That's what it amounts to. It's appalling. Absolutely appalling. But this is what we're living in. This is the days we're in. And the doctrines keep getting bigger. Right? <laughs> and uh, there's just more and more winds blowing. More people being tossed to and fro. Carried about. Deceived. Travelling a road that doesn't lead to heaven. Somehow thinking there's an easy way. Oh, they weren't too smart back then in Jesus' time. I found an easier way to get there. There's no easier way, friend. I'll tell you now. There's no easy way. Paul said to Timothy, he made it very clear, didn't he? Second Timothy, chapter 2, verse 11. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we'll live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. See that? If we die with him, we should also live with him. Death, endurance, denial, faithful and faithless. Death, endurance. Look at the ingredients here. Death, in, endurance, faithfulness. Easy road. Let's get together and feel all right. One love. And how they use the, the scripture. One faith, one one love, one God, one Saviour. The ecumenical uh, camp used it all the time to get them in. Yes, I believe there's only one faith, one doctrine. I believe there's only one Saviour, Jesus. I believe there's only one God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. I believe there's only one way. But I tell you what, it's not the religions of men and women. It's the Christ's way, because he's the only one that says, I am the way. Right? Paul the Apostle uh, spoke with the Galatians about their um, days and months and seasons. And he said to them in in Galatians 3, 1, oh, foolish Galatians, who, who has bewitched you that you, you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. We don't get the Spirit by the works of the law. Who has bewitched you from obeying the truth? That's a big one today, isn't it? With the religions of the world. You don't have to obey. See, that's the witch. <laughs> that, that's the devil talking. You don't have to obey. So he said to Eve, and he's saying it on the out. He said it in the beginning, in Genesis, and now he's saying it again. Before it all ends, you don't have to obey. You can do what you like and concoct your own doctrine and just run amok and still get to heaven because you're saved by grace. 
You don't have to repent. You don't have to obey. It's all sorted. It's all prepaid salvation. And you just cruise along there. And um, because you can't do anything to add to your salvation. No one's adding to salvation. To, in order to have salvation, we have to do what Jesus says. That's the simplicity of it. He said, follow me. He never said, try your best. He never said, cast the demons, the demons out that aren't there. Cast the demons out that are there and then go on. I believe in that. But I still believe to the uttermost that a spirit of darkness cannot dwell in the same vessel where the Holy Ghost is dwelling. I believe that's an impossibility. Hey? I believe that's impossible. That's like saying you can turn the light on and, and, the, and it's pitch black. And you've got a 200 watt bulb. But you turn the light on and it's pitch black. You're saying darkness has power over light. The light has come. Arise, shine. The glory of the Lord has risen. How many waylaid, gone round in circles, tossed to and fro, demons, 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 Derek Prince, forever casting demons out, doctrines, he's got doctrines about demons, <laughs> as the scriptures say. He's got doctrines about demons. And he's got many followers too. I'm always skeptical about people who have many followers. I wonder if they are preaching the exact doctrine of Jesus. Given the uh, track record of the prophets and apostles of old, <laughs> eh? There's pretty scanty followings at, the, at times, wasn't it? Paul was deserted by a whole mob that he brought to the Lord in Asia. They all left him high and dry. Why? Because he was a bad man. Why'd they do that? He's a heretic, was he? Paul, the apostle? No, he wasn't a heretic. He spoke the truth. But these uh, mob in Asia, they departed from him, couldn't hack the post. Paul got himself into a lot of trouble because he, he, he kept to the uh, Christ doctrine expressly. He got on the wrong side of everyone. When you read the scripture, you see Paul <laughs> He didn't mess around. He didn't side with anyone but the Christ. He got stuck into Peter about the Jews. What are you doing? You're not helping these Jews, Peter. Wake up to yourself. What do you think you're doing? You're no example, right? That's not the way to do it. Paul the Apostle was the man outside of the Christ, of course. He was no religious man or woman. When he was Saul, he was. He was full on. He knew all about religion. He, he'd been there, done that. He'd done the frontlets, the whole lot. He, he had all the bells and whistles of the Pharisee of Pharisees, trained by Gamaliel, Hebrew of Hebrews, circumcised on the, what was it, sixth or eighth day or something, Whatever it is, eighth day. <laughs> hey, he's a Jew. He had everything going for him. But he realised it's all in vain. It's all in vain. It amounts to nothing. He just wanted to know Christ. 
and him crucified, death, burial, and resurrection. And I tell you what, we will know Christ's death, burial, and resurrection if we follow the word. If we do what Jesus says, you're going to know it. It's not going to be some religious uh, Easter egg show. Right? You won't be too bogged down with uh, who's making your chocolate eggs or your lolly, lolly eggs when you're walking with the Lord. Could you imagine John the Baptizer and Jesus getting all bogged down on uh, people who are getting underpaid for making chocolate eggs? Come on, like really. The world has gone out there and they're just totally off the track that the churches are totally off the road. They're off the rails totally. And they've got all entangled in the affairs of this life. And they've just lost the thread. And Jesus is so hard to find in these people. Right? Talking to a chappy recently, and uh, he was raised up with the Anglican religion, and oh boy, the comments, you know, and the things said, I thought, wow, that's just straight out unbelief. How many really do believe Jesus? That's the kicker, isn't it? Will I find any faithful when I come? That's a scary one. Yeah, so um, it's across the religious board worldwide, ecumenicalism. It's closing in. And you're breaking all the rules if you don't conform. At the end at the other end of the uh, dragon, I would say, at the other end of the dragon, we have the purpose-driven life of Rick Warren. I mean, that made him a famous uh, heretic, didn't it? Purpose-driven life. I call it the purses-driven. P-U-R-S-E-S, purses-driven life, Rick Warren. A multi-million dollar businessman saddled up with uh, the black Beverly Hillbilly back then with Obama and now we're going to do wonders with a bag of eggs and a stick hey Rick Warren's a friend of all religions but him and Obama they had some plan going uh, Rick Warren spoke of Obama's I inauguration and apparently drawing up a peace plan, <laughs> drawing up a peace, peace plan on the board that I thought Jesus already had a peace plan. I thought he was the peace plan. So who, who's going to draw out the peace plan? Cat Stevens. Is that the peace train, isn't it? Come on now, the peace train. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Come on, the peace train. Pack your bags together. It's all good things to come. Oh, Cat, Cat Stevens. He got his desserts too, didn't he? Being followed by a moon shadow, he's getting tracked by the Muslims. That's what's on their flag in it, the moon. Hey? And the stars. I'm being followed by a moon shadow. The moon god. Allah. 
I finally got him. He converted to Islam. Religions of men and women. So many, so well healed, financially stacked up. You know, they've got it all there. But there's still that one missing, Jesus. He's still knocking at the door. He, he, he He's still wanting to save to the uttermost. Wanting to change their lives, their hearts. As we see in, in the US. I mean, they just have to delete in God we trust. They need to throw that in the bin. God made it clear, didn't he? After all these these centuries. Hey? Eh? After all these the, the decade after decade after decade after decade after decade and God we trust, but it, it all just exploded, didn't it? Hey? Eh? And we we had all the Afro-American hoopla, you know, all the churches with the turkey trots and, the, you know, the James Browns. I feel good. And, and Aretha Franklin, and then, you know, traveling down the freeway of love. and Oh, yeah. Easter and Christmas, they're in the Baptist Church hoopla, singing Amazing Grace. Even Obama was singing Amazing Grace. Hey? The Muslim Obama singing Amazing Grace. The whole lot, it's just a mixed bag, isn't it? It's a spiritual stew with no substance. Religions of men. But when the heat came on, Hey? And uh, once you touch their idol, once you touch something, you know, they go off the brain. <laughs> they just went mental. Everything. Just have a look at it. It looks like a bulldozer has been through the pipes all over America. And, and 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 it filtered into other countries. In God we trust. Hey? Doesn't sound like turning the other cheek to me. We don't even need to go any further than that one script. Someone strikes you on the cheek, turn the other one. We don't have to go any further. The Lord just cuts to the chase, doesn't he, all the time and nails it. We don't have to mess around. When we follow Jesus, he just tells us up front. He is the peace plan. He he is the saviour. He's the one that wants to help us. He wants to gather us. He wants to gather everyone in the world. As a hen gathers her chicks unto herself, but they will not come. They would not come. And if they did, well, when the mud hits the fan, they can cope, can't they? Hey? A spiritual stew with, with no substance, with, without Christ at the helm, he's the head, it's not going to cut the mustard. It, it, it's not going to ease. It's not going to take the shock Ease the pain. When your loved one is is murdered or taken out or something unfair is done to you. Treated wrongly or jailed for doing something you've never done. <coughs> There's an Afro-American bloke on the television last week. I suppose he would have been about my age. 
maybe a bit older. I'm only 63. And um, he, he served uh, many years in, in, in a uh, state prison for a crime he never committed, and he got out and his only dream in prison was to sing on the voice. I mean, <laughs> that's what's seen him through. It's a bit like... Uh, it's a bit like that uh, Mandela, isn't it? With his Invictus. There's, there was no mention of Jesus, you know? With this fellow who was... Um, dealt with un unjustly unfairly sent to prison. It took a lot of his life. But isn't that sad? All that time and he, and when he got out he 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 got onto the Voice America, I think it is. And he sang a song. It was pretty crook too. It wasn't the best. I felt I mean it wasn't it? I mean, I've got a pretty good ear for music, I reckon. And um, it wasn't too good at all. But no mention of Jesus, you know. And because, you know, when you think of Afro-American, you think of, you know, turkey trotting and, and um, moon moonwalking the platforms of the churches and all that all the hollering and yelling out, bit of mammy in here and there, and <laughs> mammy, mammy. Sun shines east and the sun shines west, my oh my, the sun shines best. And, um, but, you know, not to my surprise, when the mud hits the fan, everyone turns feral. <laughs> Heaven turns feral and there's no demonstration of the long suffering and perseverance of the Christ spirit of, of the Christ character, is there? So we're left with just religions of men. Just overload. The world is just loaded with religions of men. Oh Rick Warren. Oh, Ricky, don't lose that number. It's the only one you own. Hey? Huh? What's Ricky's number? Ecumenical. Ecumenical, isn't that's his number. If he steps out of there, no one want to know him. Rick Warren. And all these others. Ecumenical. James Robson. No, Robinson. Huh? James Robinson. Robinson. Digging the wells with Betty, Betty and James, and he's slogging grog with the Pope. Hey, him and the Pope. They're uh, on the plonk. I, there's, I got a photo there of uh, the Pope, oh Francis, and James, and they got a bottle of plonk in front of them. I mean, Billy Graham was no different. And James Robson, I've never got it right, whether it's Robinson or Robson. Robinson, Robson. I think it's James Robson. They dig wells in Africa to give water to the African people. That's a good thing in itself too. And plenty of pagan organisations do that, don't they? They feed and clothe and all that sort of thing. But I won't save them. And, uh, yeah, James Robson, Billy Graham, Benny Hinn, they all like the Pope thing, you know. I don't think you can get any higher in the religious uh, hypocrisy line, you know, kissing the ring of the Pope or whatever. You get an interview with him, you've got to kiss his ring, haven't you? Something like that. And they all get in there and that's the 
top of the heap once you've had that interview with the old Pope. I think Brian Houston was starting to get a bit nervous. Uh, he thought he was going to get in there with the Pope. He was at the Vatican, wasn't he? They all admire the old Pope. Eh? <laughs> I don't know why. He looks like a dill with that dress on, I tell you. <laughs> How stupid. Eh? How stupid. Pretending he's the vicar of Christ. I mean, that's insanity. <laughs> that's insane. The Holy Ghost is the vicar of Christ. He's the rep. He, he's the, the representative of the Christ because Jesus said, I'm going home and I'll send another. He's going to represent me. He's the Holy Ghost. But the Pope reckons he is. I know who I believe. Huh? Ricky, don't lose that number. Ricky, don't lose that number. It's the only one you own. Steely Dan, wasn't it? And, uh, yeah, if, if old Rick Warren loses that number, that ecumenical, he's out. He, he'll he probably find himself on the highway again looking for a rented room with a real estate manager waiving the rent. That's where he reckons his journey started with Jesus. It goes something like that. Had no dough and he was low on dough on a highway somewhere looking for a rented room. Come across some real estate bloke, gave him a room or something, free rent. Yeah. Once you get out of step with the ecumenic and the whole church, the Roman Catholic Church, you're in trouble. You you fall out with the majority, you're you're finished. They'll just walk all over you. They won't want to know you. Religions of men and women. But the Lord said the boldness of the Lord through Paul, come out from among them, be separated from them. Is that Paul's writing again? Paul's writings are bold. You know, I like that. Come out from among them, have nothing to do with them, turn your back on them. He said that uh, Corinthians, and he said that in writing to Timothy. Headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure. That, I mean, that's ecumenical, isn't it? That's the Roman Catholic, Anglican, Uniting Church, Salvos. I mean, they're all there, aren't they? He, he's numbered them all. He's got them all sitting there in the... Um, Lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, lovers of pleasure, not lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Turn your back on such people. Hey? Okay? So when such people turn away, have nothing to do with them, rather than be bothered and troubled about, oh, I might fall out of step with these uh, heretics and, and these liars, I might fall out of step. We don't want to grieve the spirit, do we? Hey, do not grieve the spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamour and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. God in Christ forgave me when I repented. 
you got to put all this away, you know, evil speaking. I've had people say to me, you speak evil of people. I said, no, I don't. I speak the truth about people. When you speak evil of someone, you're lying. <laughs> when, you speak, when, you, when you slander someone, it's a lie. Slander is lying. It's making up a story about a person that's not true. I speak the truth in the sight of God, in sincerity. I don't peddle the word of God. I don't sell the word of God. And I don't lie about people. I listen to what comes out of their mouth and then I warn other people, this is what that person said. Stay clear. It's not the truth. You're heading for trouble if you go down that road. Paul said the same thing to the Ephesians. We should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and women in the cunning craftiness by which they lie and wait to deceive. This is what Paul said. Now, is he speaking evil? Is he speaking evil of people? No, he's not speaking evil of people. He's just telling the truth. How will the people know if you don't blow the trumpet with certainty? How are they going to know to prepare for the battle? And it's going to be a battle all the way to get to glory. It's no mean feat, I tell you. Hey? Even Paul said, if I am to attain if I am to attain to the resurrection. He knew that certain things had to be done. Huh? Paul knew. I'm just going to go over to uh, Philippians. Have a gander. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 7, But what things were gained to me, these I've counted loss for Christ. But indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is from the law but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness which is from God by faith Verse 10, Ephesians 3. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. If by any means. You talk about easy roads. You talk about Someone taking you the easy way to heaven. <laughs> I tell you what, going to heaven has just become like a, um, you know, go and buy a packet of marshmallows. Nah. Sorting out your salvation with fear and trembling. We must suffer many things in order to enter the kingdom. Right? We must go through much suffering. This is what um, Paul right? Paul was saying we must go through many trials and tribulations in order to enter the kingdom. But 
we have a different message today. We have another message today. Right? Have another Jesus. And this ecumenical trust, this ecumenical uh, whole church with her children. We have that coming through, don't we? Raising its ugly head. Deceiving many. People so troubled and worried. But there's no there's no worry when we walk with the Lord and we obey the Lord. When we do what the Lord says, that's the key, isn't it? With, for the peace. That's the key. That's what delivers us. We must through many trials and tribulations enter the kingdom. Eh? Religions of men and women no way in the world. No way in the world are we going to enter the kingdom through a religion of men or, or women. I'm in Timothy. To Timothy. To Timothy uh, 3. 10. But you have carefully followed my doctrine manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch. Persecutions, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer. Persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse deceiving it and being deceived. You see, those two verses, that was the next verse in his heart as he was penning, as Paul was writing to Timothy 12 and 13, 2 Timothy 3, 12 and 13. You see how he puts them together, side by side. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. And then he puts evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You see that? When we read those two verses and then we read Ephesians 4.14. See, Paul was forever warning, wasn't it? He preached the Christ warning and, and, and uh, teaching according to the power that worked in him mightily, the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Word. Because that's what we're all born of, the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Word, the incorruptible seed. Amen? <laughs> I'm sowing my seed today. Yes. I'm sowing my seed today. It's good seed, not bad seed. I'm sowing today. I'm sowing my seed today. So what was Jesus' strategy anyway for peace worldwide? Calming the, the savage sin-filled humans of the earth. What was his peace plan? Hey. At the same time, uh, saving them from the wrath to come and hell for. Jesus' peace plan for saving us from ourselves, from
from suicide and self-hate, self-harming. There's no peace where that is. There's no peace in looting and trashing and destroying and um, destruction. People who do that have no peace. So his peace plan to cover all that in one swoop and one swipe <laughs> is repent and be forgiven. Repent and be forgiven. We make that decision, don't we? Godly sorrow. Okay? Sorrow that God receives. Godly sorrow. God didn't receive Esau's sorrow, did he? He didn't receive his sorrow. He said, even though there was tears, it might look like sorrow, but it wasn't godly sorrow. Because godly sorrow leads to repentance, not to be regretted. And then we bear the fruit of that repentance, befitting, which is not going on with what we were doing. Bearing fruit. The fruit of godly sorrow is, is true repentance, and the fruit of repentance is uh, holiness, departure from that sin. Full stop, period. Amen. So, uh, there's many religions out there. There's many ways out there. But there's this one narrow way. There's this one unique, uh, specific, special way that's like no other way. Like no other doctrine. Hey? It's exclusive. It excludes sinners. I can tell you now. You say, but Jesus came for the sinner. Yes, he did, that they would repent. He came to save the sinner from their sin. Save them from having to go on with that. Because that's just the devil hounding. Jesus hates to see people being hounded by the devil and, and, and then in chains to the devil to become a set them free. But how many want to be set free? How many like being tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine? How many, some people must like that, I reckon. They just go from one dry gully to the next, and one ditch to the next. Dry gully, ditch, spiritual drought, backslide. Dry gully, ditch, spiritual drought, backslide. And that's the way they live their life. They haven't even considered the perils of not progressing. Right. Our message today, religions of men and women. They're not going to help you. You have to turn to Jesus. We have to pick up our cross and we've got to follow him. We have to do what he says. I love what Peter said in uh, in one Peter one twenty two. Since you have purified your soul 
in obeying the truth through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Okay? Through the spirit. We just can't do it. We just can't do it without him. We have to be born of the spirit and born of the word. And then we don't have any problem obeying the word. When we're born of the spirit and born of the word, there's no battle. There's, there's, I should say there's no wrestling who's going to lead. <laughs> Those who are led by the spirit, these are the sons of God. They're led by the spirit. Because if we're born of the Spirit and we're not led by the Spirit, we're no better than Galatians. We're no better than the Galatian people. They went backwards to their beggarly ways. That's not saved. Saved is not going backwards. Saved is going forward. We don't go back to perdition. We go forward unto salvation, to the saving of the soul. So... I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. And uh, it's all a gift, isn't it? The grace, the faith. The, the power, the Holy Ghost. Father, opens our eyes and reveals to us it's all given it's all given, 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 given flesh and blood has not revealed this to you Simon Vajana but your father in heaven hey so all these uh, religious practices and their do-gooding Can't save. Not by works. By faith in the Son of man, the Son of God, Jesus. So we can do all the, all, all the good works and, and, and good deeds that we want. But if we don't do what Jesus said, we don't love him more than uh, our mother and sister and brother and wife and children. We don't pick up our cross. If we don't give up our lives, if we don't uh, depart from our sin, if we don't obey him, how can we be saved? We can't be saved. They're my brother, sister and mother, who hear the word of God and do it. Everybody said, Amen, I give you all the glory, Jesus.